Over the past few years, we've seen a notable increase in the interest in archery, either in doing it or watching or talking about it. And this is partly due to the rise of viral videos from Lars Anderson and others. Part of this new wave of enthusiasm also corresponds to what has become labelled as combat archery, which is what we'll be talking about in this video. Unfortunately, combat archery has also become a bit of a brand name for um, the game where people run around with phone tip arrows and shoot each other like in uh, paintball or laser tag. Uh, some places call it archery tag, which is also a bit of a brand name. So that's a bit confusing, but just to clarify, we are talking about what people perceive to be real historical battlefield archery or combat archery. If you go about looking for combat archery, you might notice a couple of things. The first is that it's actually pretty hard to find comprehensive detailed information on combat archery, on what it is or how to do it. The second is that it tends to be quite controversial, especially among archery and historical uh, communities. So what is the problem with combat archery? And to clarify, this is not meant to be an attack or criticism of combat archery, but it's my perspective on why it's difficult for people to sit down and talk about it. The first problem is that combat archery is often poorly and vaguely defined. It is something of a modernism. It's something people today use interchangeably and synonymously with historical archery or military archery, but this isn't really accurate. Back then, archery was used for three main things, hunting, war, and sport. Now, today, these disciplines have become very specialised with their own uh, techniques and their own specialised equipment, but back then, people would have used the same equipment and techniques for all these purposes. When you look at historical texts, you won't really come across the term combat archery. What you will come across will include archery texts, which will mention archery in a military scenario. You might come across military manuals, which mention archery. You might come across military archery manuals. But all these things will describe archery in a fairly universal way. Archery is archery, it's not combat archery. So what this creates is a strange redundancy where uh, people are attaching combat in front of archery to indicate a particular kind of archery, but that's kind of what normal archery is. A side effect of naming this as combat archery is that it kind of appeals to a modern buzzword mindset where uh, it just sounds really cool and awesome and real and edgy. It's like how uh, manufacturers can take a product, make it black, and then attach the tactical label on it. This isn't saying that combat archery isn't real or it wasn't used historically. Rather, when people talk about combat archery, they're referring to a specific style of archery. This is normally to do with the Arab archery sources, which are often referenced um, in videos by Lars Anderson. And these are real and valid sources. You must remember though, that Arab archery does not represent the entirety of archery historically and worldwide. It is one specific style of archery used in one period of history in one region for one kind of warfare. It doesn't disqualify other styles of archery used in other areas that were also used effectively in military contexts. So the styles used by the Arabs weren't the same as those used by the English or the Japanese or the Chinese or the Mongols. Yet all these nations and cultures and empires also use effective military methods which differed from what you might think is combat archery. And even if you look at the Arab archery context, the Arab sources describe a multitude of ways to use the bow. Yet when people think about combat archery, it's a very specific method which is mentioned almost as a footnote in these sources. In fact, to be even more specific, the particular method which is identified as combat archery is the Slavic draw with multiple arrows in the hand. When people see that, they go, aha, that's combat archery. 
This creates a somewhat arbitrary black and white definition of what is and isn't combat archery. If you hold multiple arrows in your hand, that's combat archery. If you shoot one arrow at a time, then you're not doing combat archery. If you shoot from the right side, then you're doing real archery. If you shoot from the left side, then you are a fake archer. Uh, if you shoot three arrows in one and a half seconds, then you're an effective archer. If you shoot slower than that, then you're dead. This simple polarization of what is and isn't combat archery is what makes it difficult to engage in discussions and debates over historical archery on an intellectual level because people are just exposed to one flashy, fast kind of archery and judge that to be the real combat archery. Disregard the fact that not every culture uses the same methods. People fought in battles without holding multiple arrows in their hand. People fought in battles without shooting extremely quickly. These are just as valid. Some styles were used by some people, some styles were not. And the most important point here is to remember there is no one single universal style of archery. The second problem is that combat archery often uses modern archery as a straw man. Just as combat archery is very narrowly defined, proponents and enthusiasts of combat archery often become very selective in deciding what modern archery is, and the punching bag they use is modern target sport archery. Real battlefield archers could run around very quickly and shoot multiple arrows from short bows like these, while modern archers are using these stupid long modern space age bows with stupidly long rods and cheating sights. There's no way this would be used in battle. You can't use it from a horse, you can't use it in a forest, and if a modern Olympic archer fought in battle, they'll lose to real historical archers. Yes, that is correct. This is not a practical tool, and nobody has ever made the claim that this would be an effective battlefield implement. This was designed specifically for one purpose, to compete as a sport. It is a specialized piece of sports equipment. Modern Olympic archery is entirely different from historical battlefield archery. There is no connection and there is no claim to any connection. There is no need to bring this up. We know this already. It is an entirely different style, practiced in an entirely different time period by entirely different people for an entirely different purpose. If you want to debate historical military archery or combat archery, don't pick on sport archery as your foil. Nobody is arguing that sport archery is superior or more practical. It isn't. What's more interesting and relevant is if you compare historical styles with each other. Remember, we have to recognize that multiple styles existed and coexisted, and often they would be used against each other. That's where we do have real historical debates and very interesting discussions. After all, we can compare the sources and texts on medieval English archery versus those of the 17th century Gao Ying Chinese military manuals. We can compare how the Japanese samurai fought from horseback with bows compared to how the Huns or the Mongols or the Parthians or the Scythians used their horseback bows. That's the kind of thing which is real head-to-head -head stuff. Not sport archery, which nobody thinks is a real kind of practical archery, but the actual styles which were used in battle, in combat. This was made 60 years ago to compete in an Olympic sport. It has nothing to do with military applications or historical archery. It's like comparing an ancient warrior to a modern fencer. One wins battles, the other wins medals. Historical archery by itself is already amazing, fascinating and interesting. If you are engaged in discussion of historical techniques and you have to keep on bringing up how bad modern archery is, that's a bit of an unhealthy obsession. If you have to degrade one style to elevate another, which we already agree on, then it's not really anything new to the conversation. It's not really bringing up a point of debate. And it's generally not a good way to go about engaging in an educational, meaningful conversation. As I do cover a lot of modern archery on my channel, I do often get this kind of comment and I feel compelled to remind you, if you find this kind of archery boring, you don't have to do it. 
The third problem is that combat archery doesn't clearly fit into a historical context. When historians or historical enthusiasts or archery enthusiasts discuss military archery, there is a general consensus. Military archery typically involves the use of heavy war bows, 70 pounds and higher. Now, this is documented in historical texts and proven through archaeological records. If a technique, a style or method cannot be done with what is a military grade bow, then its authentic application in the military context is questionable. This contrasts with the popular perception of combat archery being purely about speed and agility. There's a lot of praise for combat archery being practical, but if it can't be proven using the equipment that was used historically in the scenarios that we use historically, it raises questions. It makes us uh, make a very long assumptions and uh, suspend our disbelief. Traditional archers, history enthusiasts and researchers are often dismissive of combat archery because those techniques are often only performed on light bows with partial draws. We have a fairly good understanding of how historical archers used historical bows and if you can't achieve a full draw with a proper full weight historical bow, were these techniques really combat effective? We can't just give historical archers the benefit of the doubt by giving them an automatic boost to strength, speed and agility. They are humans. There are physical limitations to how you can use war bows. You can't exceed a certain speed unless you change the parameters. And if you're changing the parameters to now include very light bows with partial draws with no accuracy minimum, then is it really authentic combat archery? We should also remember that archery history is actually quite well documented. There are numerous sources, historical texts, and manuals which reference archery and the events they were involved in. So if we have this perception of combat archery being multiple arrows being shot against multiple enemies and how a good archer can fight in close quarters and kill lots of enemies, why don't we see this in history? Surely an army of a hundred archers or a thousand archers could devastate every army they faced because of how skilled these combat archers were and yet we see absolutely no mention of historical archers performing these feats outside of legendary myths and tales. And usually these legendary feats were of extreme accuracy with a single shot, not with multiple shots killing multiple enemies. This should not be a secret, it is quite well known. Even people claim that archery has been rediscovered and Lars Anderson has reinvented forgotten archery should remember that these people who reinvent archery are using publicly available sources which are still used by archers in schools today. These texts and sources have been used to teach traditional archery for hundreds of years uninterrupted. There is very little secret in what they can and cannot do and people who actually practice these styles don't make these claims of combat effectiveness. So if you think that somebody has reinvented forgotten archery, they read a book that has an English translation from 50 years ago. Historical archery is largely not a lost art, at least the knowledge of it is not lost given the documentation available. Now, there are fewer people today who can practice it to the same level of skill that historical archers might have, but it doesn't mean that these arts are secret combat techniques. The practice and research of traditional historical archery is ongoing. One shouldn't confuse historical archery with a style of combat archery which was never used historically. The fourth problem with combat archery is that it often omits practical, realistic scenarios. For a style which prides itself on practical application, being combat archery, most of the demonstrations are more like exhibition or trick shooting, which has caused a lot of controversy and saying, oh, it's not trick shooting, it's real battlefield archery, and yet we don't see how this will be effective in a real battlefield situation. Make no mistake, these demonstrations may demonstrate exceptional skill, but they're intended to impress, dazzle and amaze. It doesn't validate 
a battleful application if it's improved in a scenario or a test which may be relevant to a real battle scenario. If combat archers are criticizing modern sport archery for shooting at stationary targets, well, many demonstrations of combat archery are on stationary targets. If the targets are moving, they're often very big targets shot at very short distances for certain hits. Or they may be exhibiting very specific skill sets like how fast they can shoot without having to qualify what they're hitting. They're not trying to hit a target that is avoiding being hit, is protected from being hit, or there is no risk to the archer. And there are some skills which have some practical value. Being able to shoot while moving is a pretty basic archery skill that would be used in historical combat. But there are other things which really push that boundary. Jumping and shooting, doing 360 spins, catching arrows. These don't seem practical. They seem more like skills which are meant to be stunts or tricks, not things you would do in a real situation. Often the demonstrator isn't using an opposing active resisting target, so there's no penalty if they miss. Uh, if they miss the target, then they just cut and then they do a different take. Uh, if the target is not going to be aggressive, then um, whatever techniques they use for close combat archery would obviously work because they're not trying to avoid being hit. And as a critical viewer, I look at demonstrations and think, well, if this person was actually trying to avoid being hit or trying to actually attack the archer, then there would be no chance. These techniques would not work in real combat. And you can't just invent a scenario just to make the archer win. Uh, one of the common things people bring up is, well, what about urban warfare? If you can do speed shooting with a short bow, then you can fight house to house and capture cities. But historically, there were very, very, very few examples of urban combat. Urban combat is a modern style of warfare with modern weaponry and modern tactics. Ancient armies didn't fight in cities, and when they did, it was exceptionally rare and exceptionally bloody. Archers didn't train to fight in close quarters. And then there's a scenario which is often brought up where you have the archer being ambushed by wolves or bandits, and you have to kill all 10 bandits with your bow. There's no regard for the possibility that the archer might in fact be unable to do so and be killed while trying to do so. Now, I understand obviously that running a live demonstration with real people shooting real arrows can be dangerous. I'm not encouraging people to do that. But I would love to see a test which is transparent and active where people are actually in a real situation or shooting against targets which emulate that. If you're going to say that combat archery is useful for close combat, then let's create a scenario where they would have to use it in close combat with success and a fail criteria. It's one thing to shoot five balloons five feet away with five arrows very quickly, but does that mean the same person can do that against five actively resisting people who might have swords, who might have shields, who might have armor, and you're supposed to bring them down with one arrow each somehow. It's a very stacked scenario. I don't think it's been proven. I don't think it's been recorded. I find it very hard to believe these things because the tests and demonstrations don't push these active elements. And this is something of a similar problem to martial arts where masters will claim that certain techniques and styles were very useful and were very effective, but they can't prove it because their assistants are, are compliant and they don't resist. And when they're faced against real situations, their techniques don't work. Um, obviously, you know, talking about historical combat archery, we're not using modern scenarios and modern techniques. But if no one can prove they could be done and no one can prove they were effective, then how can we just take that as fact and accept that this was real authentic combat archery? The thing is that archery doesn't need to be theoretical. It is a practical skill with practical equipment. People do practice, people can train to do this, and if they can train to reach that level, they should be able to prove in some transparent way that these things were effective in the scenarios in which they were used. And if it can't be proven, they cannot be given the benefit of the doubt. In conclusion, I'm not saying that combat archery is fake or didn't exist. There are bits and pieces which were authentic, real archery styles and techniques which are documented and are practiced. What makes this topic of combat archery 
difficult is that it is not a well-defined topic. It is a modern invention, a modern perspective that is redefining archery. Not reinventing archery or rediscovering archery, but redefining it under certain terms and umbrellas. That means some styles are combat archery, other styles are not combat archery. And that makes these discussions difficult. I'm not discouraging people from learning different styles of archery. I learn different styles of archery and I really enjoy it. There's a lot to gain from exploring historical traditional styles. The problem is that combat archery as a thing is difficult to discuss around because it's not well understood or well defined by people in the archery community. When you mention combat archery, people who do archery don't actually know what you're talking about because Archery is archery. It's normal. What you say is combat archery is to other people normal archery. And when people make content or discuss combat archery, this combat label kind of brings about a very specific in your head kind of archery which we don't clearly understand. As archers, we just call it as what it is. That's Turkish archery. That's Saracen archery, that's mounted archery, that's a thumb draw, that's a slapping draw. These are techniques which are generally well known among people who practice them. We don't call it combat archery because combat archery has not been a thing until recent times. And as we said before, by saying certain styles are combat, it implies other styles are not. And that is entirely false. Anyway, what are your thoughts on combat archery? Is it a thing we can clearly define? Is it something that we've already known about for a long time? Is it just a passing fact? Post your thoughts below. This is New Sensei. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.